was the very opening of a Holst first suite in E flat, as I would normally play it. The fingerings you saw me use are what I use in real life playing. You may have noticed if you watch my videos that sometimes I use third valve instead of one and two, partly for intonation, partly for response or sound sometimes, but they are very close to each other and it's good to know that you can use either in some circumstances. In this case, they help me with that slur in the second half of this phrase. The slur there is from a D concert to a G concert, or in treble clef, an E to an A. Both could be fingered one and two, in which case that becomes a lip slur. A lip slur is simply a slur between two notes where you don't change fingerings. As brass players, we should practice lip slurs every single day. They're a critical part of our playing. They're often useful in solos uh, for flashy techniques. In pieces like this, we're hardly playing flashy at this point, but they're useful for smooth playing, sometimes for intonation as well. I do like third valve for the G concert or A written. <laughs> It's slightly lower in pitch with third valve, which is usually what we need. On a brass instrument, when you have combinations of valves, you start running into mathematical errors where the notes are going to get sharper. One and two is an example of that, but a very simple example with a very small error, so one and two is quite useful most times, but three might be better. In this case, though, it helps you avoid that lip slur, which is otherwise like this. I missed that last slur, and that's part of the point of this whole discussion this morning. However, I did make the slur with one and two to one and two. Perhaps that's because I'm more crescendoing there for the phrase and decrescendoing to go up to the final B flat. So that may be why I missed the final B flat. In any case, that's also a lip slur and an example of what can happen, especially if the band director is doing this while you're playing that opening phrase. This is the euphoniums and tubas together playing, and you, you may get requested to play it softer, and that makes the lip slurs even harder to play. Now, speaking of that last slur, there are three different techniques that can help you with that one. Two of them are discussed in some of these old-fashioned books that we have, the ones by Arthur Lehman and Harold Brash. They do give some good tips hidden among all their paragraphs and musical examples. I recommend you have the Harold Brash uh, Euphonium and Four Valve Brasses book and also both volumes of the Arthur Lehman The Art of Euphonium Playing books. In any case, three ways that you can do that final slur. Well, four ways counting the natural playing, which is this. You can also add a slight legato tongue to get up to that final note. That can help you sometimes bridge that slur. The other way that uh, I believe it was Harold Brosh mentioned in his book is to play it with a slight half valve. Now a half valve effect I do use sometimes when I want to do a gliss between notes something like that. Obviously we don't want that here, but if you do it very quickly, just as you make the slur, just with a partial, a partial movement of the valve like this, it smooths out that break that otherwise happens between those two notes as you're slurring up a fourth. The last way that I thought of to do this is something not mentioned in those two books, but it's implied in the book I wrote on alternate fingerings for the euphonium. If you read the whole book, you know how to figure your own alternate fingerings. 
and in this passage that can come in very handy. So instead of playing the F or written G in treble clef open, we can play it with fourth valve. <laughs> So then that becomes a natural slur rather than a lip slur up to the final note. In the first half of the phrase, the final two notes are also a lip slur from F to B flat, but in the other direction, we're going down. I find downward slurs are harder than upward slurs because they're more of a relaxation rather than a, an extra input from your muscles. Controlling relaxation is harder than controlling the extra input as you go up. So. That was a natural slur, wasn't too bad. Um, if you have trouble with that though, and again, under battle conditions when you're actually in a concert or in a rehearsal even, and you're getting this from the conductor, um, or if you just hear, there's a lot of sound when you put together, say, two euphoniums and two tubas doing this, you may just feel like it's too loud. And that can subconsciously cause you to back off just enough to make the slur mess up. Like that. So again, you've got the same options that I mentioned before in this passage. The first is to use legato tongue. I don't like that as well going down, but you can do it. I find that more awkward myself. You can use the half valve technique that actually works pretty well on this one. You can also use the alternate fingering technique. So again, use fourth valve when you get to that F, the written G and total clef. That makes the slur very easy. Now you will need to practice that a bit. The tone is slightly different with the fourth valve. And in my case, the fourth valve is a little bit lower than I want on that particular note on the F. Is the normal F, which actually is slightly sharp on this horn, so a little bit lower is okay. But that is more lower than I want it to go. So. You could also use one and three instead of four, if that's too much of a problem with four. So there are some methods you can use to help you through a rough spot. Let me emphasize, though, these are not things you should use out of laziness. Uh, you should always practice lip slurs on a daily basis. When you first practice a piece like this, and for most of your practice, you should work it with the normal fingerings and try to make them as smooth as possible. In the long run, that makes you a better player because you're learning to do what is hard. And it is hard to do sometimes a lip slur, especially in a soft context like this. If, however, you find that it's just not working smoothly or if you start having trouble when you're in the group, when you're in the ensemble, when you have to play it at the dynamic that the conductor wants you to play it at, then look at some of these techniques and you will have to practice them. They're just like any other technique. So I hope these tips are helpful for you. Uh, I do recommend you buy those two old-fashioned books I mentioned before, the Hal Brash book and the Arthur Lehman books. I'll put links to them in the YouTube description here so you can find them easily. I also suggest you buy my book on alternate fingerings. I'll have a link there for that book as well. That will help you not only play through some practical examples of using alternate fingerings in band passages in music that you'll encounter, but it also gives you the idea of how they work and why they work, so you can figure out what ones you want to use on your own sometimes. Lip slurs can be a real problem. They were for me for a number of years until I got serious about practicing them. So buckle down, work on them, work on the other techniques, and you'll be an even more magnificent player than you are right now. Thanks for listening.